Hello ladies and gentle ghouls and welcome back to my channel. You've all already seen me make a bustle pad before, but this time I made a bustle pad that's a little bit different. My original idea for this bustle pad was to make something that would be really simple and easy for the folks to follow at home should you need a bustle pad, but then I got into my scraps of black lace from my last project and then I decided to make something really complicated instead. So my original concept for this video was going to be making a bustle pad out of things you can buy at Joann's. But then, with the fabric that I was using for this, I mentally started calling it the Fairy Tale Castle Bustle Pad, and that name simply stuck. Despite how complicated this bustle pad got later, the base of it is actually pretty simple. I knew from my previous adventures into the Edwardian era and the late Victorian that they tended to draft their waistbands on a curve, so to get the same waistband curve for all of my pieces, I decided to use this large bowl, which worked very well, I will say. Other than that waistband curve, I didn't really have anything specific in mind. I was mostly just going for the shape that I generally saw in bustle pads that I was able to find reference pictures for from the era. And it wasn't a bad idea, because it, it quite clearly worked out well, as I really like the shape of the final garment that I ended up with. There are actually four parts to this bustle pad. The first one, which is that big cushion at the center back, a little one that holds the ruffles mounted to it, as well as the two on the side where the hips go. In terms of proportions, the center cushion is about a third the size of my waist, and each of the smaller cushions on the side are about a quarter, and they overlap slightly so it doesn't take up the whole of the waistband, but it still adds quite a bit of volume on the back and the sides, as a bustle pad was wont to do. If you've ever done any quilting before, I used that process for the main cushions in this bustle pad. I used two layers of basic natural colored cotton batting to stuff the middle of it. I Usually it seemed like these bustle pads were a little bit thicker, but I didn't want anything that would be too crazy, as I already have a pretty substantial bustle pad in my one with the succulent. After I had the rest of my weird shaped pieces cut out, it was time to cut out all my ruffles. And these ruffles are two and a half inches wide, and most of the half inch is eaten up in the bottom hem after I get that done. I think I had four ruffles that I used for this, but it wasn't as many as I had originally wanted. I just didn't want to sacrifice any more of my fabric as this Fairy tale castle fabric is going to get used for something else later on, but them spoilers. I used steam and an iron for a double rolled hem on the bottom, but left the top raw because it was generally going to be covered up with other stuff and would not be visible from the outside of the bustle pad when it was all finished and complete. Then I just sewed that narrow hem down with some contrasting thread in black, as per usual, while the lighting was really, really bad in my little sewing area because my sewing machine is directly in the path of the sun. I would love to correct that, but unfortunately I can't think of another place that my sewing machine can go without replacing my current table. My quilting to secure all the layers of the cushions together was not done in any particular design once again. It was just sort of out from the center to give the piece a little bit more stiffness and a little bit more oomph, but not completely 
get rid of its ability to curve having been cut with that waistline curve that would allow the stretch to begin with. The edges of my quilted cushions were bound now with some black bias binding because even when I'm making a fairy tale castle bustle pad, I simply cannot stop being goth and extra. I can't help it. I mean, maybe yes, I just didn't feel like cutting bias binding out of my fashion fabric because I wanted to save it because it's going to become something Lolita maybe in the spring, but. You know what? We're just gonna keep blaming it on my being goth and extra, cause that's true too. Also bound the edges of my little ruffle panel that I mounted all the ruffles onto because I figured it would look nice even though it wasn't quilted and therefore could have been turned inside out but I think this was a neat touch and it gave it more of that goth Victorian vibe with the black edges. It was only after those were assembled that I was truly able to start messing around with my ruffles and see what was going to end up A looking the best and B being the most efficient use of my leftover lace from my last couple of projects. Usually you need less ruffles than you are expecting but because all of these were on sort of an outward curve from the bustle pad I had to go with a little bit more than I was expecting, so I was just kind of messing around with how many ruffles I could fit, how many ruffles I could fit before they started becoming unruffly from that outward curve, and before they started to nearly collapse under the strain of having something placed atop them, because that was sort of integral. I forgot that I was going to put interfacing on my ruffles until I actually got done putting them because this was originally inspired by the horsehair braid ruffles in my other bustle project. I did eventually get something worked out even though I hadn't been able to use my ruffles in as many places as I'd originally wanted while I was first coming up with the concept for this, but I didn't want to sacrifice any more of that fabric to this bustle pad when I knew that using lace would work just fine on the, the little guy cushions. And then I had like nine nightmares straightening out all of these ruffles because they're so dense that getting them to all lay flat and smooth and not rustle each other is actually pretty difficult, so be aware of that when you're making any future ruffle endeavors. If they're too intense of a ruffle, you will end up struggling to not run over other parts of the ruffle. Because my ruffles were so narrow, I didn't use my patented tool 
shove the fabric underneath the presser foot method of ruffling these. I just went through with a really large machine stitch once because as I said they were narrow and I actually wasn't too concerned with these being intensely neat because they were so small. I just ran one line of really wide stitches and then you can pull the top thread or the bottom thread and have the fabric gather up and bunch nice and neatly, especially if you're working in a little tiny thing like this. You can kind of see that outward curve ruffle problem that I was talking about in the background in my foggy cushions lying there in the back, but in the foreground you can kind of see how these black bits of lace were gathered, but not very densely. I just bought them from Joann's. So they're not really going to stand up to actually being ruffles by the time they make it all the way out to the edge of the bustle pad where you actually want to see the ruffles. So you can see me doing some messy box pleats with them, and that's the only way I could really get them to still look fun and ruffly, peeking out from behind the ruffles on the bustle pad. And then later, because I didn't want to stack any more machine stitching onto that bias tape, not because I was opposed to having visible top stitching, as clearly a lot of this is composed of visible top stitching, but just because it already had like three rows of it on top already, I went through and hand stitched all this on so that I wouldn't have to worry about running over anything with the machine stitching as well. And while I liked the effect of the purple and the blues on the black fabric, it does at this point look like your grandmother's ugly chair cushions. And then everything was ready to start getting pinned together. I didn't have any exact amount that I was going for in the amount of overlap. I knew I wanted it to go around the hips, but I wasn't sure by how much, so I pinned a lot of things together and then put it on my dress form to see how it would go and then compared it on me and then put it on my dress form again just to see and measured it against itself a bunch of times until I was happy with the way that it looked. Eventually I was happy with the way everything was arranged. If you're doing this at home, I would recommend that you sew your cushions together and then sew all of your cushions that have been sewn together onto the waistband, just so that you can see everything you're doing because you can't really get the best control when you're sewing all of those things at once and trying to get them all to line up on that waistband nice and neat. There's a very high chance that otherwise you will end up with things not being on there properly or just acting funky once you get done. It also allows you to have a little bit better control over where the edges of the lace go because you do want those attached to the waistband. I also at some point during this process turned over the ends of my twill tape waistband in order to secure those ends so that they wouldn't fray, but I don't think I filmed it for some reason, or it's on the cutting room floor because I didn't mark where it was. Once those were all together, I was able to mount them all onto the waistband nice and neatly, and I actually had a pretty difficult time with this. There's just so many layers of fabric at this point that my bias tape, which was the pre-bought polyester kind, because that's what I have on hand, that it wasn't cooperating that well. And I actually broke off a needle inside of one of the pieces of quilted fabric while doing this.
The final step in this process was to use a pant slash skirt hook and eye closure and sew that in by hand. I use the pant ones because I don't like standard hook and eye closures because they're so hard for me to use. I also like kept coming in and out of focus during that. I did my best. I don't know why it hates my hands, but there's nothing I can really do about that now. The, the hook and eye closure is already in there. that the whole thing was complete. I'm really proud of how this turned out and it matches my pretty floral corset a lot better than my succulent print bustle pad which I mean not the end of the world if my corset and my bustle pad don't match but it's like wearing a matching bra and underwear. And as an example this is my keystone walking skirt the modern Edwardian one that I made for that video. Uh, back in like January without the bustle pad and here's the same skirt same petticoat same corset same chemise but with the bustle pad underneath for added enhancement like I said I'm really super pleased with how this bustle pad turned out I think it's so pretty and it's so cute and it was really one of the smoothest projects that I've done in quite a long time in terms of actually getting it put together. So like this video if you liked this video, consider hitting subscribe if you want to see my spoilers in the background that I accidentally left out becoming actual garments, or just want to see that Lolita outfit that I make in the spring out of this fabric. In the description box below you will find me for the various social medias. But the best way to keep up with me is via my Discord server. You can find a link to that in the description box below. It's not just for sewists, it's also for visual artists of all kinds, from carpentry to culinary to digital artwork. It's also just a dandy place to be because we have like work in progress Wednesdays and inspirational Mondays, and sometimes we do movie night streams and watch like Miyazaki movies or something. It's a fun place to be. And thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.